Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review. Today I'm looking at my first ever Australian loco. Today's model is of one of Australia's most quintessential steam locomotives, and it is this, the C38 Pacific by Australian Railway Models. And this has been one of the most confusing models I have ever bought. It's not so much the model itself that's confusing, but it was how to get one, and where's it come from, and where does it date back to. So let's jump into this. As you can see by the box, this is an Australian Railway Models locomotive, but I've seen some listings that call this a Lima model, Lima obviously being a Hornby brand. And there is a connection to Hornby here, because Hornby actually distributed this model over here in the UK. But there's another connection. Back in the 1970s, Lima did produce a C38. So I started wondering, is this the old Lima C38 that's been brought back, maybe upgraded a bit? Well, I found a photo of the Lima one, and as you can see, it looks really dated and crusty. I don't think there'd be any way of updating that sufficiently to look decent. So I do think this is probably a new tooled model within the last couple of years. Anyway, Hornby distributed this in the UK to UK retailers. So a few years ago, I pre-ordered one of these from Hattons at a price of 148 pounds. Now, looking at Australian websites, the RRP for this seems to be around 299 Australian dollars, which translates to 157 pounds. So 10 pounds off the RRP, I was quite happy with that until it got cancelled. Yeah, it turned out Hornby, in the end, did not distribute these to retailers. If you wanted one, you had to go direct to Hornby and pay quite a bit more money. So on principle, I did not renew my order and I decided not to get one of these. Later on, the retailers did end up getting these. This black one ended up at Hatton's for £229. But again, I decided on principle, I'm not going to order this. I managed to get one pre-ordered initially for £148. Now you want 229 So no, I decided I'm not doing that. Then I saw these for sale at Game. Yes, that's right. The British retailer of video games. Yeah, go figure. No idea. At a slightly more reasonable price of £165.49. So I decided to order one and here it is. An absolute nightmare to buy. Was it worth it? I have no idea. Is it the old Lima version that's been upgraded? Is it any good? Is it worth £140? Is it worth £220? No idea, but we're going to find out today. A very confusing locomotive. It looks okay inside the box, but what's it like? Let's see. Right, my first ever Australian loco, and of course also my first ever model from Australian Railway Models. So let's take a look. If I show you the end of the box, and I'll also have to stand it on its end, you can see that this is 3803, it's a C38 class 462 Pacific Express passenger locomotive. And if I show you the back of the box, you can see we've got a nice drawing of the loco and also a brief history on the real thing. So pause and read that if you'd like to. For now though, is this any good? And is there a reason why these ended up at game of all places with their prices slashed? Well, let's see. Let's pull it out and see what we get. I'm hoping that this will be a high spec model because even at the heavily reduced price, it's still quite a lot of money, so we're going to see what this is like. Right, so I've got a bit of an instruction manual here. So here it is for the C38. We've got some general information here. If I open it up, we've got some basic CADs here showing lubrication points. Body removal seems to be three screws. That's fairly standard. There's a quick look at the mechanism, which does look very Hornby-esque, doesn't it? Makes me wonder how much of an involvement Hornby have had in this model. Maybe none at all, I'm not sure, but that does seem familiar. And then it looks as though it's got, uh, I don't know, does that look like an 8-pin socket in the loco there? It doesn't actually specify, unless I'm much mistaken, so that's not very useful. And then on the back, nothing much there. Okay, any accessories to speak of? No, and it's just in a polystyrene tray, which isn't very premium for such an expensive model. But uh, anyway, let's see if I can overcome this tape. Yep. 
I must say it's packaged like a Hornby Railroad loco would be. <laughs> Hopefully at this price it's not going to be the same standard as a Hornby Railroad loco. Right, so loco and tender disconnectors, maybe that's a bad sign. Um, don't know whether this has got tender pickups or not, but we'll start with the tender. Let's lift this up. And here it is. And yeah, it looks okay. There's some riveting on the side there. The bogies are fixed, which is quite interesting. So uh, hopefully this will be okay on curves. And we've got some relatively basic detailing, although some of it is separately fitted. So more on the tender later on. It's also pretty heavy, I must say. Yeah, good weight to the tender. So if the loco's the same, we should be in business. Speaking of the loco, let's have a look at this. Is this any good? It's quite small, actually. I was kind of thinking this would be larger, given what a classic Australian loco it is. But no, it's actually a very modest size Pacific. Having a bit of trouble getting it out here. There we are. All right, I got it. And this is a cool looking loco, actually. I really like the paintwork on the side here. Those three staggered red lines are a very interesting effect. And of course, you do have the streamlined end with what is hopefully uh, a light on the end there, which would look nice. Other than that, the weight of the loco is not dreadfully impressive. The body is clearly just plastic. And at first glance, there's not a huge amount of detail on here. And frankly, if I'd bought this for 220 something pounds, I'd be seriously annoyed because this is a basic model by the looks of things. Anyway, let me hold the tender with it. That's what the whole thing looks like. And we'll take a much closer look at the level of detail and the features in just a second. But first of all, here's a bit of background on the C38 in real life. The C38 was introduced to the Australian New South Wales Government Railways in 1943, following the completion of the first of 30 locomotives in total. These Pacifics were used to haul express passenger services throughout the network, and they were the only Pacifics the railway had ever built, and they were also the final steam locomotives to be built for passenger operation there, although some were built after these for freight. The building of the class was complicated because different engines were produced by different builders. The first five were built by Clyde Engineering with the semi-streamlined casing, but others were built by Evely Railway Workshops and the Cardiff Locomotive Workshops, and these ones had no streamlining to simplify maintenance. While the vast majority of the class have now been scrapped, a healthy five remain under preservation today in various forms. They remain either in museums or in storage. So there it is up close and personal for you, the C38 from Australian Railway Models. And I think aspects of this are okay. I'm gonna say that as one nice thing, but this is not the 170 pound locomotive I paid for. Yeah, it's just lacking that refinement. And I think that was fairly obvious from the moment I pulled it out of the box. The bodies here are very plasticky and they don't feel good quality either. The plastic feels so thin and it flexes when you touch it. Not fantastic, although the weight itself is all right. So there must be heavy chassis underneath these cheap feeling bodies. So the weight comes in at 435 grams, although do bear in mind that the tender is very heavy and accounts for 115 grams of that. So that leaves just 320 grams for the Loco, which is about the same as a Rapido pannier tank. Now that's not bad, the Rapido pannier tank was very heavy, but it is just a small tank engine. This is a larger Pacific, so I think it could have been heavier. The other issue with the plastic construction is the warping of the bodywork. This running plate here, I think you can probably tell even without my ruler, is bending upwards at the front. And uh, if I just rest my ruler underneath it, I uh, can't rest it on top because of the bumps on the running plate there. Uh, you can see though that it, it bananas upwards quite dramatically at the front, which is unacceptable at any price, but particularly laughable given that these have been for sale for over £200. It also explains why Hornby were interested in stocking this, because it fits right in with a lot of their range. Anyway, the level of detail is okay in places, but it does rely very heavily on just moulded details, which again is just very surprising given how expensive this was. So most of the moulding on the side here is very coarse looking and just a part of the moulding. Yeah, not that great. You've got the lamps on the front end, which again are not separately fitted, so the profile of those lamps is completely wrong if you look at the real thing. 
And the parts that are separately fitted, like these wire handrails on the side, show copious amounts of glue where they've been stuck on, so perhaps it's a good thing this doesn't have more separate parts. It does have a few though, I mean you've got what looks like the reverser system here, which is separately fitted. Around the front we've got a fair few separate details as you can see, including a fairly well detailed buffer beam, even though the steps and such are wonky. The buffers are made of metal, but they're not sprung. Again, I don't mind not having sprung buffers, but I don't expect to pay almost £200 not to have them. Although I do like the streamlined front, the whole shape of the smoke box door there, which culminates into the lamp at the end, is a very, very cool look. So I do like that. Hopefully that lamp will work. Please, please don't tell me that these are supposed to be safety valves because they don't look like them. They look like two chocolate buttons which have been gingerly placed on top so that they'll melt and then the driver can have a fuddle after they've done their day's driving. And the paintwork's not that great either. There are areas where it looks okay. I mean, the lining on the side of the loco here is fine. And we've got the roof of the cab, which is nicely painted as well. But other areas, such as the window frames, are just really shoddily done. So there are several areas, the glue, the paint, the warping, which indicate that there is no quality control with these models, which is unfortunate. And the finish is also fairly matte and plasticky. It's missing that satin gloss that gives better models that quality look. The wheels though, and the coupling and connecting rods, these look okay. The centre of the wheels haven't been concealed, but looking at the photos, as far as I can tell, that's more or less accurate, so no problem with that. And the coupling and connecting rods look absolutely fine, not too chunky looking, they do look quite realistic. I'm actually looking forward to seeing these in motion, I think that'll look good. The rear pony truck is actually a moving one, and it's quite subtly modelled actually, which isn't too bad. Although the cab interior detail is really quite poor, no real effort has gone into decorating this properly, and it doesn't look that realistic as a result. The tender again is relatively simple, the moulding on the side looks pretty coarse, and the coal load, yeah, it doesn't look dreadfully realistic, there is quite a bit of definition in it, but uh, it's not the best in the world, and it does seem to be stuck in there pretty good, so whether that's removable or not, I'm not entirely sure. We've got some separately fitted wire handrails though, which is a good feature, as well as a ladder around the back, which again is a fairly fine part if you can overlook the visible glue, of course. And then we've got more lamps on the back, although these are not working, and you can guarantee that because there's no electrical connection to the tender at all, as well as a running number, which has been nicely printed onto there, and a similarly detailed buffer beam, which does have a knuckle coupler pre-fitted to it, and interestingly, that is in a NEM pocket. So we'll see how we get on with that. But ultimately, that's it. There's not a lot to talk about here in terms of features. It's very simple, most of the detail is moulded, and that that is separately fitted just doesn't look that great because of the glue and the lack of definition and detail in the parts. I thought I was getting a bargain paying just 165 for this, but now that I've seen the model, I feel that I was ripped off. So do not spend £220 on this thing, whatever you do. Anyway, let's take a look at the mechanism and the performance. Hopefully we will see some quality there, and hopefully this will run flawlessly. Otherwise, I'll be annoyed that this missed my worst model trains of 2023 video. Okay, let's try. So there it is, the C38 down onto the track. And the more I think about this, the more shocked I am, really, that this was released as a so-called new tooled model within the last few years. The features, the detail, the quality, they are all miles behind what you'd expect from a new tooled model. And I don't believe that this is a new tooled model. I'll talk more about why that is in just a moment. Anyway, I've already done the first performance test. I filmed that and I'll show you how that went in just a second. Afterwards though, I did my usual disassembly to see what the mechanism is like, and unfortunately the quality of the mechanism is very similar to the quality of the rest of the model, i.e. lazy and naff. So because there's no electrical connection between the loco and the tender, none of the tender wheels have pickups on them, so the entire model relies just on the loco driving wheels to pick up power. So that means that less than one third of the model's wheels actually pick up. And it also means that the long-term reliability of the model won't be as good as other models that do have tender pickups. So that's a disappointment. 
The loco to tender connection is also poor, it's just one of those hook and loop ones which is too easy to uncouple and it's not what you'd expect from a modern loco. The base keeper plate is held on with a couple of screws but the pickups are also hardwired in place which makes servicing a bit of a pain and also when I pulled the base keeper off the wires pulled through the hole and that made it really difficult to get the base keeper back on so it's inconvenient to service although it does have proper bearings on the driving wheels which is a surprise that's a high quality feature on an otherwise very poor loco and it also has just a single axle driven that's the one in the middle there nothing wrong with that at all now most of the smaller screws on the model are bad so trying to remove the front bogey to remove the body was a right pain i kept unscrewing the screw but it wasn't coming loose eventually i managed to get that off and i undid the rest of the screws and the chassis surprisingly looks just like a hornby chassis obviously hornby were involved in this project to some degree i don't know exactly what degree so I wonder whether Hornby had a hand in designing this chassis or perhaps Australian railway models took a lot of inspiration from Hornby's chassis design because it looks very much like a Hornby chassis. It does have a five pole motor with a flywheel on it. It's not a great five pole motor because it can't crawl as you'll see but it does have plenty of torque at the high speeds which is good. And then the DCC socket is this dated eight pin one which is not ideal. Most locos produced in the last few years have moved away from the 8-pin socket now, yet this has still got one. And also it would have been helpful if the box or the instructions mentioned which decoder socket this loco has so that you can plan ahead and buy the right one before you open up the loco. That's a bit silly as well. And that's it. Just a motor. No special features, no speakers, nothing else. That's all we've got. And putting the loco back together again was a nightmare because of the bad screws. All of the small ones, the front bogey and the rear pony and some of the base keeper ones as well, they've just got bad threads. You can keep tightening them and they don't tighten. It's just shockingly poor for what I paid. And then the gauge comes in quite reliably at 14.3 millimeters back to back, which is very close to the standard. So there's nothing wrong with that. And with that, that's the mechanism. Not very impressive in some areas and okay in others. But for now, let me go back in time and show you how that performance test went. So I'm not too sure what to expect for performance because obviously the attention to detail and the build quality on this model were shoddy. So maybe the performance will be shoddy too, but then again, this was so expensive. Surely they've invested in some aspect of the model and maybe that aspect will be performance. Well, let's find out, does it work at all? Forwards direction, let's give it some juice. Well, it started. It started very abruptly with a loud cracking noise, which was a bit concerning. But it works, or at least it moves, which is good. Now, am I seeing any lighting? No, I'm not. So I paid £165 for a loco that should have lights, but doesn't. Shocking. Really, really shocking. What's the gearing like? Let me run past at 50% speed for you. So that's half power. All right, yeah, well that seems fairly sensible, doesn't it? Uh, let's see what the top speed's like because this is an express passenger loco. So here we go. All right, so a good range of speeds at the top end. Obviously this has not been run in yet and I will run this in before I finally judge the loco, but uh, let's see what it's like out of the box in terms of torque. So finger in front, 50% speed. Yeah, so it's probably got a decent motor in there then, that looks good. What about the crawl? Can this do one? Let's see. Easing it up, it's buzzing, buzzing even louder. can't crawl that's about as slow as this can go now it's an express passenger loco so a crawl maybe isn't that essential but um i don't know it doesn't sit that well with me uh, when a, a 165 pound loco which was discounted at that price uh, can't crawl as well as some other much cheaper ones or at least as well as others that cost a similar amount but like i say it's not been running yet Maybe that will improve. And at the speeds that it's running at currently, it is perfectly smooth. So yeah, it's not a bad performer at all by the looks of it, assuming that it handles the curves okay as it goes around the track. So I guess that's next. I'll run this in at 50% speed, 30 minutes in either direction, 
and let's see how it gets on. Here we go. Okay, so it's fine on the broader curves. Is it going to slow down on the second radius? Not noticeably. Alright, so we've found an area of this model that is decent. At the moment it's not excellent because it can't really crawl, but it is handling the track at the higher speeds with no problem. It seems to have decent torque, and because the weight really isn't that bad on this model, it ought to be a decent hauler as well. So I'll let you know later on how this goes. I'm now going to leave it running for its full period, and then we'll come back and I'll couple it up to some rolling stock. I'll try the coupling it comes with, but I might also pop it out and couple it up to some of my British passenger coaches, which ought to be an interesting look, and then we can really test what this is capable of. So don't go anywhere. I'll be back very shortly. Okay, folks, that is running in complete. And for the most part, yeah, the performance is okay. Nothing wrong with it. Although already I am noticing an issue with the lack of pickups. And that's because if you slow this down a little bit, it can't get over the points. Look, that speed. There we go. Stop dead on the points. Why has an expensive model only got driving wheel pickups? It's shockingly poor, isn't it? So push it across. Let's bring it back over a little bit faster. Let's go at 40 speed. Still cut out, but it managed to save itself. So yeah, that's not great. It's just lazy to have no tender pickups. Every model produced these days has a connection to the tender. That's normally where the DCC socket goes, and there's usually tender pickups. If ARM wanted to create a cheap budget model like this, that's absolutely fine, but they should not have been charging what they did for this. It really is a complete rip-off. Anyway, it's running now, so is the crawl any better? I believe it does have a 5-pole motor, but uh, before it couldn't crawl. Well, now it's been fully run in. Can it crawl? I can hear that buzzing turning up. No, it just starts with a jerk. Again, for £165, it's just not really good enough, is it? I'm actually getting quite annoyed by this now because it's just such a blatant rip-off, isn't it? Such a blatant cash grab. I just can't believe it. I feel bad for the Australians who have had to fork out for this. I mean, is it normally this bad for you guys? Or is it just ARM that have done this? I don't know. This is not great. Anyway, the pulling power is fine. Because of all the weight, it's got a tractive effort of 0.36 newtons, which should be enough for this to haul about 23 coaches on straight and level track. Now, because it's got the knuckle couplings fitted at the moment, I've set up some of my American freight so that I can test that coupling. But once we've demonstrated that it works with this, I will swap the coupling to a tension lock and I'll try it with some coaches, which it was designed to haul. So here we go. Let's go and try a coupling which is going to be awkward because it can't crawl. Okay, I'll try and cut it off at the right moment, <laughs> otherwise it's going to crash. There we go, it coupled. Right, let's see how it gets on. So over here in the UK, this model cost £229 at the most at the retailers. On the middle line, I've got a loco that was quite a bit cheaper. This one cost 206 and this is a Hornby Doncaster locomotive. And this thing is so, so much better. It's got the die-cast running plate, it's got a more detailed cab, it's got lighting, it's got far more features, sprung buffers, better finish, better paintwork, better performance as well. To any manufacturer that wants to introduce a locomotive to this country for £229, this is the standard that you've got to aim for or exceed. If you can't match this thing, then don't bother, because what a waste of money that C38 was. But there we go, that's a better loco, just to show what can be done for that amount of money. And then on the inside line, we've got another example of a better Pacific. This is a Hornby Merchant Navy class, and it's absolutely sublime. So hopefully you'll enjoy those running. Let's go and see how the ARM's getting on, though. All right, so here it comes with a little bit of a load. I will increase the load later on to see how it gets on. But yeah, no real slowdown, so at the higher speed, this looks okay. But what was I saying a minute ago about me not thinking this was a new tooled locomotive? Well, seeing a so-called new model like this with so few features and such poor detail, it's gotten me thinking what on earth is going on here? Well, Australian railway models, when they announced this on social media, they did claim that this was a new tooled locomotive, 
which usually means that the model has been designed from the rails up. But I don't believe that's what's happened here. I've already said I don't think this is the old 1970s Lima model because looking at the photo it's nothing like. But more recently I discovered that Lima upgraded their C38 in 1996, yes that's over 20 years ago, and that looks a lot more like this model. And I suspect that is what this is based on, because there's no way a new tooled, new designed loco body produced within the last few years would look as poor as this does. I also suspect this because Hornby are involved and Hornby own Lima. And I have to wonder why Hornby would be helping ARM distribute this model over in the UK if they didn't have something to do with it. So I think that this model uses the Lima 1996 body. Which begs the question legally, how can Australian railway models claim that this is a new tooled model? Well, technically it could be a new tooled model. They might have had to copy those Lima tools in order to continue producing models from them. And maybe they made some small changes to the tooling, tweaked a few things, something like that. Also, the chassis and the mechanism, poor as they are, they will not be consistent with the 1996 Lima model. I assume those will have been designed recently. Again, possibly that's why they've called this a new tooled locomotive. So technically this model may have been produced with new tools, but it is, I think, misleading to call this a new tooled model, given that almost everything about it is old fashioned, dated, or in some way shoddy. So not very impressed, not a great looking loco. It runs adequately, but not as well as you'd expect for a new tool chassis. Not a loco I can recommend. And now some ratings then on the Australian Railway Models C38 Pacific. And yeah, unfortunately, it's not very good, is it? There's not very much positive that I can say about this. The level of detail I've given two star. The detail is very coarse. Most of it is molded. What is separately fitted tends to have a bit too much glue on it. This model was claimed to have a fully detailed cab, whereas actually it just has some white paint on a couple of the components and that's it. There are no lights on the model, despite the model having lamps, no special features like sprung buffers, a flat plasticky finish, and the paintwork isn't great in areas as well. The performance I've given 3 star, at the highest speeds it is nice and reliable and smooth and powerful, but it can't crawl, yeah the crawl's just really poor at the slow speeds, and because of the lack of pickups it stops on points at the medium speeds, which is completely unacceptable. The pulling power though is faultless, yeah I can't fault this at all, it's got a decent weight to it and because of the high torque motor it can haul 23 coaches on straight and level track with a tractive effort of 0.36 newtons. That's more than a Hornby King class so that I will not criticise. The mechanism on the whole is okay, it's got some quality features such as the proper bearings and the 5 pole motor with a flywheel. Other than that though, it's got a lack of pickups, a real lack of pickups, like I say, less than a third of the Loco's wheels picking up. Poor serviceability due to the low quality screws and the hardwired base keeper plate. And it's also got an outdated 8-pin DCC socket, which isn't as useful as Next 18 or a 21-pin as you'd see today. The quality for me is a two-star. It's quite a poor quality model. Plastic construction with a warped running plate, Poor quality screws where the threads have gone and they don't tighten up, visible glue, and in some places, shoddy paintwork. Value for money then, the RRP is 299 Australian dollars, although over here in the UK it was far more expensive than that. Hatton's had these in stock for 229 pounds at one point, which is just absolutely insane. At 165 pounds 49, that's what I paid, that's about the same price as your typical Acura scale locomotive, for example, the Manor. Compare this with the Acura Scale Manor and it is a laughing stock. So one star, I bought this for £65 off and it was still way too expensive. Shocking. So overall that is a score of 4.89 out of 10 and a grade of E, that's the lowest I can give. Into the logbook we go and it's 51st place above the PCC Streetcar by Batman and below the Lionel Army Hospital train set. And that's annoying because this should have been in my worst model trains of 2023 video. It's very lucky that I'm reviewing this after that video, otherwise it would have had another roast in there. So very poor, don't buy, let's move on. So there you have it, the ARM C38 from Australia. And unfortunately I'm going to have to put this one down as a cynical cash grab. 
because if they'd wanted to produce a high quality premium new model of the C38 and sell it for premium price, which they did anyway, then they would not have released this model in this state. They wouldn't have reused the aging Lima body, which I think is what they've done here, or even if they haven't, they wouldn't have designed a new model with so few features as this one does. The fact that this was priced the same as some actually new tooled models with lighting and sprung buffers and tons of separate features and quality liveries and better mechanisms just shows how unreasonable this model is. I think as a beginner's model it would have been perfectly okay if it was sold for £100 or thereabouts. But no, this was sold as a premium model at a high price. It wasn't made clear that this was a very, very simple model with very limited functionality. And even I, who can spot a rat a mile away, really thought that this would be a more premium model than it was. So, disappointing, not one that I would recommend, but please do let me know what you think about this. Looking online, there seems to be a lot of positive talk about it. A lot of people are pleased to see this model. I don't know whether those people have actually experienced it for themselves, as I now have. But either way, I'd be interested to hear what you have to say about it. For now though, thank you very much for watching, and I do still have some time for some more reviews this year, so we'll see if I can find something a little bit better than this. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers folks, you take care.